So we continue our interviews for MOOC on digital youth work, exploring different kind of tools for communication with young people. And today we have one more person inviting you to introduce yourself. So my name is Evelina Fortunita. I live in Amsterdam and I represent World of Amsterdam. It is an NGO that promotes social inclusion and diversity through spoken word poetry and creativity. It was more like necessity, not a choice, to be honest. We, since the lockdown started, we went and moved into Zoom quite fast. And of course, it's never been so important to have one tool. So of course, we remained on Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp. But of course, we also use uh, combinations, so uh, MailChimp and also MS Teams. Because I really believe that it's important to have more like communications between the tools and not to lose the communication itself. If that makes sense. Like I said I think Zoom was the main one because that was uh, more convenient for us and for the what we do. So we do have normally like in real life we have uh, live events and workshops. And for us, Zoom offered the grid view. So when people are performing, you can also see the grid view and all the audience in front of you. So it doesn't feel so lonely. And same for workshops, then you are much more able to feel like you're in a group rather than by yourself in front of the screen. We are all also on YouTube, so you can check past performances because yeah, we are spoken word poetry events organization. But we also build community around it. So our community is not just performers, but people who are creative and who love poetry. So basically, we have events that we schedule, then people who sign up to be on a lineup. And we normally have a never-ending <laughs> open mic. And it's basically a host who invites each participant or each performer to perform. And sometimes we also have two hosts, so it depends, depending on the topic. And of course, with the lockdown, we second lockdown, we focus more on partnerships with different other organizations. So we find that super helpful and also promoting the communal feeling. So of course, so MailChimp is obviously first is getting audience wider and we have a newsletter that comes out once a month, depending on how much action we have going on. We also use Instagram quite a lot. We have Instagram with our link tree, which is all the links to the ongoing events. So it's, I see a lot of people using that tool. We also use the footage from Zoom events to upload into YouTube and also to transform them into short bite videos on Instagram. And of course, another tool, which is a whole different universe by itself, is our podcast. The people who host our workshops, that uh, they are not very skilled, let's say, with technology and recording themselves. So I literally just invite them to a meeting and we record like the promo, for example, on Zoom. And then I edit that with the sound engineer into a promotion that we post on Zoom afterwards. And then what you asked about the link tree, because our Instagram account is very, how do I say, intimate. So it's like we only have a thousand of subscribers or followers. So we don't have the swipe up for stories. And that goes where like we send in our stories, we send people to check our link tree. So check link in bio, that's the link tree. And that's where you get all the info. We also have a landing page, both wordupamsterdam.com and wordupodcast.com have the, once you open the page, you have you can option to subscribe to the newsletter. So we also proactively lurking people into our newsletter. It's super easy then to check once the newsletter is out, to check engagement, to check what links are people clicking, what works, what doesn't work. Also, who blocked us. Very handy. The good tip, but we are not using it, that Google offers uh, Google Suite for free for NGOs. So that's a great thing for youth workers, I think. However, we are not using that. We are paying for Zoom. And of course, we are paying for the platform where we distribute our podcast. So that's two main things. And of course, the website domains, but that's something else. (laughs) the main reason it's all very messy when it comes to like it's too many tools to manage like you cannot have one without the other most of the time of course meetings where young people are facilitating they are of course 
hosting, co-hosting on Zoom. I always ask people to support. So I have uh, young people who are proofreading newsletters, who are preparing pictures. Uh, we have volunteers also who are supporting us with double report recording on Zoom. So in case of something happens, of my computer crashes, uh, it's we have a second or third option. But I, we always try to involve people who are interested and also educate them if they're interested. We did feel the, I call it screen fatigue, not necessarily Zoom fatigue. We made sure that we are very <laughs> mindful about the amount of invitations that goes out and the amount of uh, offers we have. So I really uh, strategically planning these things. Some of our activities are designed for introverts. So not always we ask them to turn on the camera. So for example, we have uh, Wednesday writing workshops where it's especially designed for introverts and people with <laughs> screen fatigue. You can just listen in and not necessarily practically participate. So that was our solution for the issue. Like we cannot force people. And it's, it is what it is. Well, first of all, don't be scared to ask for help or advice. Google everything. <laughs> Try everything and see what works because there's no one tool or one combination that works. And maybe what works for me doesn't work for you. But that's always like trial and error. And we've done a lot of things where we also invited people into like more participatory activities like drawing together and things like that. We tried it all and now we see what works, but we are also not 100% sure what if it will work tomorrow. Thanks a lot. <laughs> My pleasure.